Hey, welcome back. All right, this is part three of the budget drag car build. So today we're gonna to be doing rust repair. Uh, if you saw part one, I showed the car had some rust in the engine compartment on top of the frame rail, which that's what we're doing today. And it also had rust in the floor. Um, I wanted to try to do both things in one video, but the rust in the floor is pretty bad. And um, I'm really looking for a replacement panel, like say from a, a salvage yard or something like that. I mean, I could make it, but it would be pretty involved and a big pain in the butt. So it'd be a lot easier if I could just find uh, one from a scrap yard or something. You would think by now that uh, companies would start making replacement floor, pa floor pans for uh, these SN95s, but I mean, they make them for the Fox bodies, uh, but they don't make them for these. And I'm wondering if the panels for the, the Fox body, if they would be somewhat close, you know, I'm, I'm real tempted just to, uh, to buy one for a Fox body and see if I can modify it slightly to get it to work. But anyway, uh, like I said, we're going to be doing the frame rail, the top of the frame rail today. Uh, the rust is, it's right in front of the shock tower. It's in between the shock tower and the core support. Now, since it's, dra it's a drag car, I, I guess, you know, you could say, well, you could just cut the front off and get one of the tubular uh, front end kits from Team Z or whatever. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, but an unwelded kit, I believe somewhere around 550 bucks which isn't too bad, but when you're working with an extreme budget, uh, I'd rather put that money towards something else. So we're gonna fix it, that's the cheap thing to do, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's get started. Okay, here's what we're working with. You can see it's eaten down into the frame rail. Now this rust damage um, actually affects three different panels. These are layered. You've got your top panel here, it comes over, and then you've got the top of the frame rail. This is welded, spot welded to this, the top of the frame rail. And then the top is actually welded to the side of the frame rail. Here's the top panel. And then here's the side. Now I don't know how damaged this is. We won't know until until uh, we get the top part off and we can see just how deep it is. Hopefully that can just be cleaned up with a wire brush. I don't know. It looks pretty bad. But so and uh, look, it's hot. I've got my big fan going, so maybe uh, maybe it's not too loud on the video. So my approach to this is going to be uh, making the top panel first before I cut anything out. And doing stuff like this is kind of, um, it's kind of tricky because you don't want to just start cutting stuff out. You, you don't want things to lose their shape. You don't want something to move. Right now everything's where it's supposed to be. So uh, I want to make this top panel first. And then once we get that made, then I'll cut it out and then we can make the, the top of the frame rail. And once we do that, we'll cut that out and then we'll see what damage we have on the third piece. Now, this is there's gonna be some guesswork involved because we don't know how far the rust goes on the this frame rail top. I mean, yeah, it is rusty here, but it doesn't look that bad. Um, I really don't think it's gonna go past here. So I think what I'm gonna do is my top panel, I'm gonna take that a little bit past that and cut that out. And then hopefully then we'll say that'll be right around here or so, that's a guess. And then, um, then the frame rail top, let's say then I wanna keep that you know, close to there. I don't want to cut out anymore when I have to. <sighs> anyway, and so this will give me some room to weld up and grind this before we weld on the top piece. Now, if you'll notice, the, uh, the top piece has a divot in here. I would imagine that that's uh, for, it's got something to do with crashes, you know. It's a, a crumple zone. Um, 
I don't think I'm going to worry with doing that. Uh, it would be a lot simpler just to eliminate it. And I don't honestly, if I if I make the piece with that, I don't know how effective it would be. If you want to know the truth, but yeah, I think I'm just going to eliminate this divot, make it a whole lot simpler. And uh, yeah, okay. All right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, get some poster board. Well, let me take some measurements. I'll get some poster board, and then I'm gonna make me a poster board template. And then uh, then we'll start, and then we'll transfer that over to steel. Okay, I had to change camera position so I could have both hands. It's kind of hard to uh, figure out a way to, to set this camera up. I don't, I don't have very good means of doing that. Okay, so, I am deciding on how far I'm going to go with this. I think I'm going to start around here. And I think I'm going to take that about, let's say, five and three quarters of an inch around there. Um, this part is an inch and then from here it kind of tapers tapers out or this tapers in one of the two um, this is around three and a half inches and then this one is around three and an eighth and it's also got a radius and up kick uh, that we got to take into account too and the rust gets into that radius so i'll have to bring the panel up a little bit okay so let's make the template and then we'll check it okay, so we said we're going to make this uh five and three quarters mark that there's my square okay our ledge is one inch Mark that. Now, poster board has a uh, uh, like a dull side and then a side that's kind of shiny and slick. Uh, you use the uh, the dull, rough building side. And then the other, I said uh, on one end was three and an eighth and then and uh, and then this was three and a half but we've also got to account for the radius the up kick so I'm going to let's just say I'm going to add a quarter to that so I'll, I'll make that a three and three eighths and then this side will be three and a quarter Okay, now let's cut that out. Okay, we've got to transfer, this is our brake line, we've got to transfer that over to that side. You can hold it up to the light and you can see it. I'm just gonna place a couple of marks so I can use my straight edge. Now, to make that break, you can just keep your straight edge on it, get your fingers up underneath it, work it back and forth. Now, okay, let's check that. Okay, I'm just using some uh, magnets to hold the uh, template in place. Okay, that's, that's gonna work. One thing that we need to note when we transfer this over to metal uh, if you'll notice, this brake here is not crisp. It's got a slight radius to it, or a really tight radius to it, I should say. But it's not crisp um, like it's going to be when we uh, when we make the piece and we put it in a sheet metal brake. It's it's going to be a much 
sharper uh, brake. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind and uh, do something to make it match that. Anyway, okay, let's transfer that over to metal. All right, so I got my template and uh, I've got a piece of 18 gauge sheet metal. Now I'm going to take my template and I'm going to flip it upside down so that whenever I trace this out, um, it'll be easier to lay out my brake line. Okay, I'm just using the same magnets. Magnets are an absolute must when it comes to sheet metal fabrication. I'm just going to mark my brake line right here on the edge. Okay. Now. Okay. Now we're ready to cut this out. Uh, I'm using a a bench top hand oper hand operated shear. It just cuts in straight lines, um, which I mean you can use anything. You can use a cutoff wheel or whatever whatever you got, or uh, some hand operated ten snips. Uh, it'd be nice if I had a stomp shear. Uh, I don't have one here. Of course, I've got one at work. Uh, but anyway, all right, let's get this cut out. Right here. So here's my shear. Uh, this one's made by Woodward Fab. Woodward Fab. Like I said, this is a, it just makes straight cuts. It's unlike a Beverly shear, which uh, you could do curved cuts and stuff like that. It's, I mean, it's not extremely versatile, but it is handy. When using a shear like this, uh, the piece that you're going to use stays to this side. Uh, the piece you're cutting off, it gets distorted. So you, you wouldn't want to flip that around and then make your cut because you, then you would distort your piece. And this is a hold down or a, a foot or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it just holds the piece and it keeps it from wanting to tilt up whenever you're making your cut. With these straight cut shears, um, once you get started making your cut, you can't really differ, differentiate from that line. So uh, you gotta make sure that you're dead on what you want. Um, you could just go about a quarter of an inch from that line, make your cut, and then come back and use uh, a pair of of 10 snips to cut right on the line. If, if, if this uh, mark were curved, that's what we'd have to do. I'd have to just make a straight cut that's somewhat close and then come back with the 10 snips and uh, make the cut. So before I break this piece of sheet metal, I need to know how far to take it. So what I did was uh, just took a piece of poster board and made myself a gauge, and that fits. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, see, it's like so. Okay, so now I know when I go over to the sheet metal brake, I know how far to take it. This is just a cheap Harper Freight cheap metal brake, but hey, it works. I mean, I 
Man. Okay, well that was easy enough. Okay, I've got it set in place. Now, one of the advantages of using a cheap sheet metal brake is that the, the brake isn't very crisp. It's um, very soft, but luckily it matches this radius here, so I didn't have to do anything special. Um, so I've, I set it up here, I traced around it. You can see uh, the Sharpie marks. Uh, it's not fitting all the way up against here. There's something that's keeping it from from sitting all the way against it. I don't know what it is yet. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get this cut out, and then I'll uh, begin fitting this piece. Now, this line that I've, I've drawn up here, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to cut it out on that line. I'm going to stay just south of it just a little bit um, because. Given the thickness of the sheet metal, once this is out and this goes in and sits down, this is actually going to be lower than what the line is. So I'm going to cut just south of that line, and then the others I'm going to cut right up against the line. I'm going to use a, uh, a cutoff wheel on a right angle die grinder to do that. Okay, let's get that done. quite fit. I'm going to take my die grinder and I'm just going to shave just a little bit off the edges. much angle, I need to take some of it out. Okay, this has got us pretty close. Uh, close enough for where we're at. I mean, I'd say that's that's pretty well fit. And uh, no, it's not, you know, finalized yet, but you know, we're not ready to weld in yet. But for this stage, I'm gonna say that we're good. Now we'll pull this piece back off and uh, then we'll start uh, laying out our cuts on the top of the frame rail. Some, uh, some may say that I'm using the snips upside down, but you're supposed to actually use them like this. But you can't see the line that you're cutting as well. So if you flip them upside down, you've got a clear view of the line that you're cutting. 
Okay, so making the top of the frame rail now and did exactly like we did on the first piece. Uh, took a piece of poster board. Now the top of the frame is shaped like a U. It's, uh, it's actually like this is how it's shaped. So uh, took a piece of poster board and uh, then laid that out on the sheet metal. I haven't, as you can see, I haven't broke it yet. Um, what I'm going to do is the piece goes in and it spot welds uh, here and here. Well, drilling holes after uh, you've made your breaks is, I mean, you can do it, but it's just, you're just making things a little more difficult than what they have to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm going to drill my holes, my spot weld holes uh, first, and then I'll go over to the sheet metal break and I'll make that, uh, I'll, I'll break it and uh, and then I haven't cut the other piece out yet. Um, I haven't even laid out the cut lines yet. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this taken care of and, and then I'll go back over and lay out the cut lines and cut that piece out. What I did first was drilled uh, one eighth inch holes as a pilot hole. Now I'm going to go back with a quarter inch and uh, drill those out. Since the poster board template and the sheet metal piece are the same, I just used the uh, poster board template to lay out the cut lines. You can see the sharpie marks. Here I'm just setting in the new sheet metal piece uh, to show how well it fits. We got this cut out and uh, found a spoon. I don't know how someone managed to uh, <laughs> lose a spoon in the frame rail, but uh, there it is. Uh, good news is um, there's no rust damage on that piece, so we don't have to make that, which I'm glad. That's uh, a little thicker steel than what I've been using. I don't have anything that thick. I didn't want to have to get into that either. And same thing on this side. Um, I don't know if you can really tell, but uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, there's no there's no damage on this on that side either. So heck yeah. Anyway, I'm going to remove the spoon and clean all that out in there and vacuum that out and. Uh, then we'll start uh, stripping paint back and getting ready to weld some pieces in. So before I welded in the new frame rail top, I wanted to spray some weld through primer to protect it. Uh, this stuff is supposed to spray just like a regular aerosol can of spray paint, but instead it just, uh, well, you can see how it's doing. Yeah, I just said screw it and, and hosed it on there anyway. <laughs>
So to treat the rusted areas, I'm using POR 15. Now it is recommended that you use rubber gloves with this stuff, but I didn't have any and, and I'm 30 minutes from the nearest store, so I like to just carry on and be careful. Now the POR does need to be agitated, but you're not supposed to shake the can. You don't want to turn the can on its side or on its top or anything like that. I can tell you from experience that if you get the POR on the underside of the lid, it'll glue itself to the can and you'll actually destroy the can to get it open. So you'll need a, a stir stick to stir this stuff up. Now also, you, you don't want to, if using a brush, you don't want to dip straight out of the can because if you use the brush and brush over a rusted area and then go back and reload the brush, any rust particles that are on that brush will get in the can and the POR will react with it and uh, once you seal it up it'll actually build up pressure and whenever you go to take the lid off the next time it'll the lid will pop off with some force I'm not gonna say explode but it'll it'll come off with some force also I'm using the stir stick to transfer the amount of POR that I need over into the cup I don't like pouring it because if any of the POR gets into the the lip of the can it's hard to get back out if if you leave any trace of the POR in the lip, once you put the lid on it, when it, and it dries, it'll glue the lid to the can and you'll destroy the can getting it open. All right, I'm gonna be welding this with uh, a MIG welder, also known as uh, the wire welder. Maggie, you can't stay there. Uh, now the type of weld we're gonna be doing is what's, what's called a butt weld. And that means this panel that I made, when it goes in, it, it doesn't overlap or anything like that. It, it, it butts up against it. That's why it's called a butt weld. Now. These here where I drew, where I drilled the holes, that's a, that's going to be a, that's called a spot weld. So anyway, I'm just uh, going to start tacking this in. I don't want to weld every. Okay. I don't want to weld everything up all at once. Uh, heat creates distortion. Um, when you weld, what? <laughs> When it heats up, as it cools, it shrinks. So it, uh, so, uh, it would distort this. And I don't want any distortion. I don't want to have to come back and do any body work or anything like that. I just want to be able to weld this in. I want to grind the welds down and, uh, and then shoot some primer on it and get it ready to paint. So anyway, I'm just going to start tacking it in for now. And uh, then once I get everything tacked in, then I'll final weld everything. When you start tacking stuff together, the heat causes it to want to move around. The, will, will cause the panel to move around a little bit. So uh, sometimes you have to hold it. You have to move it around as you're doing it to, to get it back in place so you can tack it. You may have to come back with a hammer and uh, knock some metal around to get everything to line back up.
Okay, I've got my spot welds done and I'm tacked in on the butt welds. Uh, so now I'm gonna come back and finish welding that up and uh, I'm gonna jump around so I don't build up too much heat. Can't weld without a ground. Okay, it's welded in. Uh, now I need to grind these welds and, uh, and then I can get the, uh, the other piece in. I drilled my spot weld holes. Now we're gonna hold this in place and get it tacked. It's not really a good way of clamping it, so I'm just gonna hold it the best I can. Well, it's just sitting there. Hey, that's good. Just gonna try to hold this and get a tack on it. I really need a clamp to come in and clamp here, but I, I don't have one. It's not shaped like that. I'm gonna try to Okay my panel is kind of sinking a little bit, so I'm gonna take my dolly, take my dolly and put it on this panel, not the one I made on the factory panel. I'm gonna hold it there and then try to knock this, the panel I'm making, try to knock it up. Yeah, I've got to get this, I've got to get this down.
I know you're not going to be able to see, but right here, um, the panel that I made is, it's kind of overlapping uh, the factory panel. So what I'm going to have to do is take a cutoff wheel and go in and trim just a little bit. I'm going to, I can get to it easier from the backside, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to trim that a little bit, and then I'll be able to hammer and dolly and bring this up. The dolly that I'm using right now looks like this. It's called a, see the shape of it. It's called a, a toe dolly. And another dolly, and this is pretty much a, a basic, kind of your standard dolly. If you buy any kind of hammer and dolly kit, this is usually the dolly that's gonna come with it. This is called a heel dolly. So, because it looks like the heel of a boot. So, heel and toe. Yeah, there we go. Heel and toe. Okay, I've got the same thing going on here on this back radius. And I kind of expected it to be a little bit of an issue because whenever you're dealing with stuff like that, it's always, uh, it's just, it's kind of tricky. Uh, to get it right and you usually have to go back and trim something and that's the case here um, This panel that I made is actually overlapping the factory panel. It's overlapping it on the back side. So uh, What I'm gonna do is take my cutoff wheel and and trim it just a little bit again I'm gonna trim it on the on the back side and uh, and then I'll use the toe dolly and uh, my hammer and I'll hammer this around and uh, get it to line back up. Okay, everything's tacked together. Uh, the spot welds are done. Now it's uh, time to weld it up solid. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with this piece. I'm gonna jump around uh, to keep the, the heat to a minimum. All right, so now it's welded and uh, it's just time to do some grinding and get this cleaned up and then we'll take a look at it. All right, so here it is. too bad okay so at this point um, all this needs is just uh, a little bit of sanding with the DA and uh, it's ready for a little primer and uh, you know then that can be sanded and then it'll be ready to paint uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out it's not it wasn't that uh, difficult of a job it was uh, just there were some some things that are a little tricky whenever uh, you're dealing with the top of the frame rail where you got a U shape, and uh, the other part the, that had the radius, you know, stuff like that. That it makes it a little tricky. It's but it's not too difficult. Um, hopefully, this gives you a little bit of encouragement or inspiration or whatever. If you know you need to do some some panel repair on your own it's uh or of your own it's it's really not that big of a deal um as long as it's something small like that now we're not making a roof skin or anything that would be a different story but 
it's really just uh, taking your time and hey, even, you know, even if you do, once you get the panel welded in and everything ground, even if you have to do a little bit of body work, that's not a big deal. Uh, I just felt like if I was doing a video on how to do this, I need to be able to do it without needing any body work after it's over with. Uh, so, which, you know, if I had to do a little, it wouldn't, it wouldn't upset me. I just felt like for the video that it needed to be uh, good enough to not have to require any body filler. But, all right, well, that's it. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. Um, when I, uh, I had it in my head on how this video was gonna go and uh, I was pretty excited about it. And as soon as I started recording, uh, it didn't take long and I just felt like this was just turning into total garbage. And I almost just turned the camera off and just fixed this uh, on, you know, on my own without recording it. But um, I, I stuck with it. And uh, so I'm hoping that you guys get something out of it. I'm, I'm hoping maybe you learned a little something, I don't know. I really wanna get into doing the instructional videos and I, I, I've got a long way to go and I, I know I've got a long way to go. Um, and how I see it in my head and how, it's, how it goes are two different things. Uh, uh, I do need to upgrade some equipment and uh, I need a little help as far as recording too because it's just me and uh, it makes it a little difficult uh, to try to get some of the shots that I want to get and there's so much only so much stuff I can do with my phone too I would you know like to upgrade to, uh, to a, a better camera anyway but that's you know that's on down the road but um, Anyway, uh, just thanks for watching and uh, stick around and uh, these videos are going to get better, I promise. All right, thanks.